Hello everyone and welcome to this quick introduction to Cambridgeshire's reptiles. My name is Stephen Elaine and I'm the chairman of the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Amphibian and Reptile Group. This is my second video for the Cambridge Nature Festival with the previous one looking at amphibians. Hopefully you've already had a chance to watch that one too. This video will follow a very similar format and I hope that the information contained within is useful to you all. First of all, we're going to go through all of the species of reptiles that can be found in Cambridgeshire, learning how to identify them and also looking at their behaviour and habitats. The first of the two lizard species found in Cambridgeshire is the common lizard, or Zootoka vivipara, to call it by its scientific name. These are small brown lizards that can often be seen basking on fences, logs and other prominent features in grassland and heathland. Due to the extent of agricultural intensification in the county, there are few places where you can reliably observe common lizards, but they do sometimes turn up in the most unexpected of places. Common lizards can sometimes be mistaken for newts, given their similar morphology. However, Lizards have scales and are highly mobile, whereas newts don't and are quite sluggish in comparison. The females give birth to fully formed live young laid in an egg membrane between July and August. These are dark brown or black in colour. The young turn a copper colour as they get older, with them gaining an adult colouration after the first hibernation. Adults can be quite variable in colour, with some populations having a green hue, which can cause them to be confused with other lizard species not currently present in the county. Like the adults, the young feed on insects, with their favourite food being spiders. The second lizard species in Cambridgeshire is the slow worm. They can often be mistaken for snakes, which is reflected in their scientific name, Anguis fragilis. This translates as fragile snake. They're quite rare in the county, and we're not entirely sure if any native populations exist. Those that we are aware of have been moved into Cambridgeshire to areas of suitable habitat from outside the county for mitigation purposes. They can grow to 40 centimetres in length, being gold or copper in colour. Males have a uniform colour throughout, whereas females have darker flanks. Males may also develop blue spots along their sides as they age. Again, slow worms don't lay eggs, and instead give birth to live young. These hatchlings are approximately 8cm in size and bright gold in colour. They have a black line along their spine which will fade as they mature. Hatchlings usually appear in August or September, although this may be earlier in milder years. Traditionally, slow worms have been known as the gardener's friend, as they love to feed on slugs and other animals that damage flowers and homegrown food. If you live in Cambridgeshire, and you have them living in your garden or your allotment, then you are very lucky indeed. Sea Park has been involved in the monitoring of slow worms at Wannabury Country Park since 2015. In that time, we've established where they occur and what the population structure is. Unfortunately, slow worms like to spend long periods of time underground, which doesn't make surveying for them any easier. Our findings are helping to shape the management of the areas where they do occur, as well as the adjacent areas, should they feel the need to disperse. Our next species is the grass snake, the largest snake native to Great Britain, growing to around 1.5 metres or more. They are an olive green colour with a black and yellow collar around their neck. They can often be seen at the Cambridge Botanic Gardens as well as along Hobson's Conduit where they prey on amphibians. Grass snakes are fantastic swimmers, so they can sometimes be seen in places where you wouldn't usually expect to see a snake. They are only native species of reptile to Cambridgeshire that lays eggs, often doing so in compost heaps. Hatchlings are around 20 centimetres in length and weigh just 5 grams. They're miniature versions of the adults that fend for themselves as soon as they've left the nest. The reclassification of grass snakes in 2017 has since caused a few headaches, so let's try to clear them up a little bit. For a long time, grass snakes were considered to be a subspecies of Natrix natrix, designated as Helvetica. After some genetic work carried out by a team of German researchers was published, it was very clear that Natrix natrix Helvetica was in fact a separate species that had been hiding in plain sight for centuries. From this point on, all grass snakes west of the River Rhine and down into Italy are regarded as Natrix helvetica, or the barred grass snake. It was when the media picked up this story that the confusion began. Many were reporting the findings as a new species of snake being discovered in the UK. However, the grass snakes we've all known and loved for generations just have a shiny new name, having been split from the other grass snakes in Central and Eastern Europe. The Adder, or Vipera barris, is our only native venomous snake. Unfortunately, they are extremely rare in Cambridgeshire, only being found in the north of the county. This is a likely consequence of the extreme levels of habitat modification that have taken place as a result of agriculture. Adders are a lot smaller than most people imagine, with females growing to only around 70 centimetres in length. They are sexually dimorphic, with males being a silver or grey colour with a black zigzag pattern down their back. The females are brown in colour with a darker brown zigzag pattern down their back. Adders are extremely vulnerable to disturbance, which may also help to explain why they are so rare in the county. Like most of the reptiles we've already covered, adders give birth to live young. This is an adaptation to colder climates, with populations of adders being found well into the Arctic Circle. Their populations in the UK, however, 
are declining rapidly. The only non-native reptile I'd like to highlight for this quick introduction is the red-eared slider. There are a few non-breeding populations that can be found across the county, along with other once popular terrapin species. The animals that have found their way into our county's water bodies were once pets, which have since been abandoned. Some have linked these releases to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle craze in the 1990s, although terrapins are still being released nationwide. They're extremely long-lived and can often be seen basking on the side of riverbanks. It is too cold for them to breed in the wild successfully, but climate change may mean that this is no longer the case in the near future. Now that we've looked at the reptile species found in Cambridgeshire, it's time to look at the equipment needed to survey them. When it comes to reptile surveys, only one piece of equipment other than a clipboard and some sturdy boots is required. These are, of course, corrugated steel sheets or roofing felt. These can be laid about areas of potential reptile habitat in order to help create a favourable microhabitat attracting the reptiles. When laying these cover objects down, it's also worthwhile taking the time to find any potential sun traps, natural cover objects or other areas where reptiles may also like to bask. Now your site is ready to survey, how do you go about it? Let's find out. Ideally, you want to make six survey visits or more to your site, visiting between 8 and 11 a.m. or 4 and 7 p.m. when air temperatures are above 10 degrees Celsius. Having placed your cover objects down, it's now time to lift them up and record what is underneath. Don't be disheartened if all you find are ants and voles. This is common on most sites. If others are suspected to be at the site you're surveying, then care needs to be taken when lifting the cover objects so you don't get bitten. Fingers crossed, it will all be worth it. Slug in the way on those warm summer days and you'll find a reptile or two. Just a note that not all reptiles bask underneath the cover objects. Some will prefer to bask on top, so remember to approach them slowly. This will also help prevent those that are resident underneath from detecting you and making an escape before you had a chance to lift the objects they're hiding under. Finally, you've gathered lots of data, so what you do with it? As I pointed out in my previous video, there are a number of recording schemes to choose from, and it's often the case of finding out which one is best for you. You could use an app such as iRecord or iNaturalist, or send the records directly to CPERC, the local environment record centre. It all depends on the volume of data you've gathered and how sensitive it is. I'll leave some links in the description below as to where you can record your observations so that you can decide which one is best for you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to help you to learn more about Cambridgeshire's reptiles. I'll leave a link to the Sea Park website in the description if you'd like to know more or have any questions. Please remember to record any reptiles you see through the various methods I highlighted previously. That's it from me. Bye!